Hey, hello, you're stuck with Wolf Gordon, Cubans Roofing and IT and IT Security. Today, looking at microservices, specifically how developers use microservices in a way that could introduce the organization to risk. I am uh, I'm preparing for um, RSA, RSA conference. I am preparing to talk on DevOps Day there, uh, specifically about what to do in your first 90 days of DevOps. And, and in doing so, I'm picking up the phone and talking to uh, friends, people I know, people who are customers, and saying, hey, look, I know you're securing DevOps. What was your first 90 days like? And some of the stories are really good. And the story I'm gonna tell today comes from a call that I uh, had yesterday in an airport in a Delta Sky Lounge. There's probably way too much data, but I'm there in the lounge, lots of things going on. The guy goes, oh, and this keeps you up at night. And I'm like, wait, what? Say it again? So I'll tell you that story in a moment. But the tip for you is this. Whenever you're doing microservices, you need to make sure that the microservices are not being bundled with other applications of a different security profile. That's not an easy thing to measure. It's not an easy thing to do. If you think back to the old CISSP days, we had to think about like low information flowing into high risk information and, and all those rules and the Bell Laputa rules. I probably said that wrong because it was going to yell at me at, at, uh, on social media. But if you think back to all that, those things still apply and they apply very much so in the case of microservices. Here is the example that uh, was given to me yesterday. Let's suppose that your folks create a people microservices. People microservices sits there. This people microservices talks to the backend database. It has access to everything you might want to know about a person, their name, their you know birthday, their address, <coughs> contact information, social security number, driver's license, everything you might want to know about a person. We go, hey, this is sensitive information. This is sensitive microservice. We're gonna only use this microservice for this new application. And so the application records all this data, the data is provided, bada boom, bada bing, everything's fine. Now this microservice exists in your microservice registry, right? Anyone who wants to create an app can look up in the registry and go, what what, uh, what microservices do I have the ability to access? Ah, look, here's a people one. And lo and behold, a year goes by, whatever, and someone's building a parking app and they wanna know, hey, person's name, where they park, what their address is. Do you think you're gonna write a new service for that? Probably not. They'll probably go, ah, I've got this people microservice. I can use that. And now this parking app, which by any range of you know risk ranking is a very low risk app, who's really gonna care about getting into where people park, has access to high risk data. And a low risk app means it probably won't go through the same level of scrutiny shouldn't. Uh, same level of scrutiny from a security perspective is a high risk gap, right? It's not maybe necessarily going to have a, as rigorous of a code review. It might not necessarily need a penetration test, right? And yet, a flaw in this app would lead to the people microservice, which would allow very, very sensitive information to get out. That is a type of risk that we don't oftentimes think about. In fact, I had not thought about it until I was in a Delta Sky Lounge having this conversation. Uh, and it really gives me gives me a lot of thought, right? How do how do we maintain that? Do we have the registry risk rank our services? Is there other things we need to do? Should there be a gate when things go in? I don't know, but the point is this. Those, you know, seemingly textbook conversations we had back in the day about uh, the different models of information access, right back in the forefront as we move into this age of DevOps and microservices. What do you think? If, a, have you got this solved? Please hit me up <laughs> in social media or in comments. And B, if you've got uh, if you got a story about your first 90 days in DevOps, hey, let me know about that too. I'd love to chat with you. Cheers.